Hi everybody, it's Cheryl with Silver Sage Studio, and today I'm going to be continuing my series on One Card Five Ways using the Altenew Grateful Heart stamp set. These are last week's card that I did in a video. I had intended on all of these being in one video, but last week's video got to be too long, so I planned on doing these two cards today. However, the two purple cards ended up taking up lots of time as well, so the two mixed media cards on the top are going to be in next week's video, so stay tuned. So let's get started. Here I have stamped the outline of the flower and using Hero Arts Black Ink, and I'm going to go, and I'm using watercolor paper here too, by the way, Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. And I've taken three colors of ink, a light purple, a dark blue, and a teal color. And I'm coloring them onto this plastic sheet here. And then I'm gonna squirt it with water and kind of blend it in just a little bit. And then I'm going to smush it, as they say, onto the image itself. Now, normally with the ink smushing technique, you're putting your watercolor medium onto a, your surface and then taking the watercolor paper and turning it upside down and putting it onto the surface. But in this case, because you're putting it on something that you can move and see through, you have a little bit more control over where the color goes. So this is what I like about this technique is that it is both organic um, with a little bit of control at the same time. When I put the colors onto the plastic sheet, I'm kind of putting the teal color around the edge just so that, you know, um, there's maybe a little bit of green on the outside of the flower and more blues and purples on the center of the flower. So right now I'm just heat drying it and I'm going to go ahead and take the corner of a paper towel, which allows me to pull up. It, it, the paper towel itself just kind of pulls up the ex excess um, watercolor and water that is on your surface. So, um, and it does that without leaving a blotch. So it's kind of a nice little technique. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the next layer. I'm going to use the same three colors, but I'm going to add in a dark purple just to give it a little bit more oomph. Again, I'm putting the teal on the outside there and I'm spritzing it and I'm swishing just like that. Now the card on the left is going to be a little bit bolder. The card on the right is going to be a little bit softer. I'm kind of going for two slightly different looks here, all using the same technique. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Keep drying those again. Now I'm using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, but really you can use any water-based markers. You can use dye inks, you can use watercolors, you could use spray inks. Lots of different items that you might have in your stash would work with this process. I like using these watercolor markers for this because it just gives you another way to use something that you already have in your stash. And um, using what we have in different ways can give us a lot more bang for our buck and also be a little bit more fun. So here I've decided that I was going to do a little bit more smushing, but I decided I just wanted to do some flicking instead. So I'm picking up some of that um, color using a water brush and flicking it onto the background. You can't see it a whole lot right now, but it is adding just a little bit more visual texture to both of these images as I do this. It's not super bold, but it is there. Okay, now that this is dry, 
I'm going to just consider this. And I decided that on this card, I wanted to color the centers of the flower yellow. And I'm taking the dark purple marker that I used earlier and I'm just going to do some outlining and then I'm going to take a water brush and I'm going to pull out that color and it's going to darken up the petals here. And what I like about this process is you have the darker color that brings out the bold flower, but you still get some of that visual texture that you have underneath from the previous process. So I really like the overall look of that. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and play some music while I color. At this point, I'm assessing what I've got here, trying to decide if I'm done or if I want to add more color. And I decide I'm going to add more color. So first I want to dry it. And by the way, when I'm coloring these petals, I will color one petal and then skip to a different petal that's not right next to the one I just did because then sometimes you get some bleeding, which wouldn't really be too much of a problem here since I'm doing everything the same color, but I just find it easier to work that way. And I'm going to go back in and add some more of that gold color to the center of the flower. And then I'm going to bring in a gold Wink of Stella pen just to add a little bit of oomph to that. I like this because it warms it up just a little bit. And I've decided that I want to bring in a little bit of that yellow. So I'm going to do that by splattering a little bit of that color onto the image. I think it just kind of pulls everything together when you have a color in more than one spot. And again, I'm trying to decide if this image is done or if it needs a little bit more. And I decide that for now it's done, but as you'll see, I'll come back to it and do a little bit more. I decide I'm gonna cut these using these nested circle dies. And here I'm going to go back again and add some more of that color onto the flower. 
Right here, I'm trying to take off a little bit of that color that's on the outside of the flower around that petal, just because it's, it's blending a little too much and I want a little bit more contrast. And I think that darkening that up helps a little bit. I've decided to go back and add some more color to the flower. And I'm going to work my way up a little bit further onto the petals just to add a little bit more definition, contrast, if you will, with the background so it doesn't blend in quite so much. By the way, this is sped up to, I think, double time, maybe time and a half. I do not color this quickly. Um, but I think that last step right there helped it a little bit. So now, now it's time to start pulling these cards together. For the first background that I'm doing, I am using this background stamp from Hero Arts called the Waves Background. And I'm stamping with Versamark ink and I'm gonna emboss this with clear embossing powder. As you can see, I'm almost out. Need to buy some more. I've had this for a very long time. And then you can see me think I'm going to use these tweezers, but it really just doesn't happen. The card kind of gets away from me here. And then I realize it's big enough that I can just use my hands, which is fine. I love to watch this heat embossing on videos. I love the way that it looks. It's very mesmerizing. At this point, I'm assessing how this card's going to come together. And by the way, here I'm using Paper Tray Ink Royal Velvet Cardstock and Paper Tray Ink Amethyst Allure Cardstock. I'm going to stamp this using Simon Says Stamps Sentiment Border Stamp. It says with sympathy. I'm using my Mini Misty here to line this up so that I can make sure that it's straight when I stamp it. I'm going to heat emboss this in white and then layer up my card and pull it all together. I really love stamp sets like these, these sentiment stamp sets that can work for a lot of different occasions. There's a thank you and a happy birthday, I believe, in this stamp set. It's very versatile and the design fits on a lot of different cards and with a lot of different card styles. And I've decided that I'm going to layer it up as so. I'm going to be working on both cards here. I'm going to go ahead and start with this sympathy card having some problem here with my tape runner. I am going to put this on fog colored cardstock. Layer up that waves background, which just gives it a little bit of texture and dimension. And then I'm gonna put the next layer on I'm going to keep these relatively flat. Here I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Why I'm using this end of the glue pen, I don't know. There's an end on the other side that puts out wider swaths of glue. Putting something heavy on that just to hold it down. I find with watercolor paper, if it's not laying flat, it's good to glue it. I did not get the recording of the stamping of this background stamp. It is a dot background stamp. I do not, couldn't find the actual background stamp I used here, but I link to something that's relatively similar in the video notes. And this card is going to be a thank you card. I have mounted the flower onto some paper tray ink royal velvet cardstock just because I felt it needed a little bit of a frame. And then I'm gonna glue this congrats sentiment from Hero Arts 
congrats stamp set and die combo. And you're going to see here that I have a little bit of a problem when I'm putting the first part of the stamp set on. Um, what's happening here is that my tweezers, which I love by the way, they actually have a little bit of adhesive on the tip and I need to get them cleaned off because they stick to the letters here. I tap off the extra glue onto that piece of scratch paper before I put it on. That way the glue doesn't seep out. It didn't really help me here because I ended up getting glue onto my card anyway when I was moving those letters around. And here I've decided I need to get off that glue that has smudged on here. And I couldn't find my adhesive eraser, so I tried some others that did not work. But then I found my adhesive eraser. It works so much better. I'm going over the congrats die with my Wink Estella pen. I love that pen. I've decided to leave the sympathy card as is, but with the congrats card, I want to add a little bit of bling. Here I am adding some Studio Katia sparkling crystals using Tombow Mono Multi Glue and my Jewel Picker. This is the last step in these cards. I really loved making these cards. I love working with watercolor medium. I love playing with different techniques. Even if things don't work out in a way that I like, they're super fun to play with. That's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Tune in next week to see the next two cards using this same stamp set. See you then.